In the wake of the pandemic, inflation surged, and the supply crisis caused by Russia's invasion of Ukraine aggravated the inflation crisis so much that India's inflation went up to 7.41%. However, as time has passed, those dynamics have calmed down and inflation has eased. In May 2023, retail inflation stood at 4.25%. In June, however, India's retail inflation rose slightly to 4.81%. Now, this increase, although higher than May, remained within the tolerance range set by the Reserve Bank of India, which is 2 to 6%. Now let's talk about the factors that drove inflation. The spike in inflation is mainly due to the surge in food prices, particularly vegetables. Now other products such as cereals, meat and fish, eggs, pulses and spices also witnessed an increase in prices. Now, the uneven monsoon rains and heat waves have caused damage to crops, leading to shortages of essential cooking ingredients. Now going forward, the progress of the monsoon season will be particularly something that most economists will keep their eyes on. Now, if the distribution of rainfall remains uneven, it could have an adverse impact on the sowing of cardiff crops and further worsen food inflation. Now, coming to interest rates, the RBI's focus is on keeping inflation around 4%, which is the middle of its target range of 2 to 6%. In June, the RBI decided to keep the rates unchanged for the second time in a row. Now, the inflation rate for June is 4.81%, which is within the RBI's acceptable limit of 6%. However, it is slightly higher than the previous month and also above the RBI's ideal target of 4%. But since the increase in inflation is mainly due to higher food prices, the RBI is likely not give much importance and instead take measures to address the supply side issues causing the price surge. India's industrial output in May 2023 increased to a three-month high of 5.2%, surpassing expectations. Now, this growth was mainly driven by the mining and manufacturing sectors, which performed well. Additionally, electricity production improved after relatively weaker performance in the past two months. The consumer goods segment, including both durable items like appliances and vehicles, as well as non-durable goods like food and clothing, also showed improvement on a year-over-year -year basis. Now, compared to pre-COVID levels, the overall industrial output in May 2023 was 7.1% higher. Now, this growth was led by 14% increase in electricity generation, 16.3% increase in mining, but the manufacturing sector saw relatively low growth of 4.8%. And even the output of capital and consumer goods are still down compared to pre-COVID levels. Overall, May witnessed a strong growth in industrial output, surpassing expectations. However, we do believe sustained growth in industrial activity will depend on continued consumer spending as external demand still remains somewhat sluggish. Now, one concern is the increase in retail inflation, primarily driven by soaring food prices. Additionally, any weather-related disruption could also pose further risk to the ongoing rural demand recovery. Having said that, this is me, Merlin Susanna, signing off. Take care and stay invested. Equity investments are subject to market risk. Read all investment-related documents carefully. Visit www.researchandranking.com.